KUAM News Headlines is presented by Calvo's Insurance, serving Guam for 80 years. Matson and the Adai Itano Program. All new 2018 Kona by Hyundai, available at Cars Plus. IP&E, fueling excellence. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it. And King's Restaurant, located in Timuni and Dededo. Always open, always local. Ahead on primetime, a death investigation underway after a teen is found dead in Dededo over the weekend. Plus, a priest on the run, the latest with Father Adrian Cristobal, accused in multiple sexual abuse lawsuits and now facing sanctions by the church. And the Guam Memorial Hospital takes the hot seat during an oversight hearing with senators. Nesta the Conto has that report from Agatnya. Half a day and good evening. A Dededo family is mourning the death of their young teen. Tamika Nalta, only 15, was found dead at a Dededo residence Saturday morning. Well, we spoke with the family today. They are not yet ready to speak publicly about Tamika as they are coping with loss, but the autopsy is done. Tamika's death has now been ruled a homicide. A life gone too soon. Criminal investigators back on the scene Monday morning after 15-year-old Tamika Nalta was found dead over the weekend. Images from Tamika's Facebook page show a young and happy teen. The tragedy happening just before 7 o'clock Saturday morning at the family's ranch-style home along Chalancota in Dededo. Neighbor Roger Pollock was in shock after finding out what occurred just steps away from his home. It's always sad when there's a tragedy. You feel... You feel more sorry for those who are still alive and are the relations to the people, to the person who died. So uh, uh, it's always a sad situation when there is a tragedy. And only the Lord is going to take care of it and our prayers go out to those uh, survivors. Hopefully the police will find out why it happened and who did it. And uh, the person that uh, committed the crime uh, will pay the penalty. Authorities early on could only say they are conducting a death investigation, but Tamika's family on Saturday confirmed she had been stabbed and that authorities have yet to arrest her killer. Though they could not find the words to speak about the teen today, Tamika's aunt Letitia Duenas, who now lives in Texas, also shared the heartbreaking news on social media. She put a call out for help to get her back to Guam so that she could say her final goodbyes to her young niece. Duenas writing, this is not something I ever thought I would do, but I'm hurting so bad inside. This baby is always helping my dad, helping our elders, and she's always playing with my boys whenever she visited. Never a time I've seen her with a frown, and now I feel like my heart was stomped on. The teen was a student at Ukuru High. This weekend we heard information about um, a possible fatality, well, a fatality that happened over the weekend involving a 15-year-old. Uh, the first we thing we did was to verify um, that whether this was a student in our schools and to ensure that counseling services would be made available as needed. Now, we're in the summer, um, so you know, school is not ongoing. We do have summer school, and so what we're going to do is just monitor the situation and should there be a need for counseling services to, to provide that. But I'm not going to release any uh, specific information about the, the student uh, beyond uh, saying that we're on top of it on our end until the police are feel comfortable releasing that information uh, as they do their investigation. An investigation this family hopes will bring up more answers as to why Tamika's life was cut short at 15. Chief Medical Examiner Dr. Aurelio Spinola says he is not allowed to release details of the autopsy at this time as the police investigation is ongoing. But again, KUAM confirms her death has been ruled a homicide. A Superior Court grand jury had until the end of the day to indict the mother accused of killing her newborn. Earlier this month, 23-year-old Melissa Fupel was arrested and charged with manslaughter as a first-degree felony and child abuse as a third-degree felony. The baby girl was brought to the hospital in plastic bags and died from suffocation, according to court documents. As we reported, Fupel concealed her pregnancy from her family and her boyfriend and gave birth to the child in the bathroom. She remains in jail on $100,000 cash bail. A priest on the run, Father Adrian Cristobal, had until the end of day last Friday to report to the Archdiocese of Agania. The no-show priest now faces sanctions by the church, but could also potentially face criminal charges. Here's more. Effective Saturday, June 16th, Father Adrian Cristobal is forbidden from acting as a priest in public. No wearing of the clerical garb, no celebrating mass, 
and no hearing confession. These sanctions were imposed by Archbishop Michael Burns, who ordered Father Adrian return to Guam in light of three clergy sexual abuse lawsuits filed against him. The former chancellor had until the end of Friday to report to the Archdiocese of Agania. His last confirmed location was the Diocese of Phoenix, where he was reportedly studying canon law. The concerned Catholics of Guam speculate the priest could be in hiding in the East Coast. CCOG President Dave Sablon. I think Adrian is in New York somewhere or in Newark, New Jersey, which is, uh, you know, basically the headquarters for the neocatechumenal way. We expected it. He is now a fugitive on the run. Since April, three former Barragata altar boys have filed civil suits against Father Adrian. Only identified by their initials to protect their privacy, LJC, JCC, and JE, all report being sexually molested by the priest in the 1990s. JCC, however, reports the abuse spanned over a 15-year period, occurring almost daily the first few years and only ending in 2013. It's this allegation that could land Father Adrian in jail, thanks to changes in Guam law. Well, I think uh, one of those accusations uh, said it was in the 2013 period or up to 2013. So any time between 2011 and 2013, I think Adrian would be uh, subject to criminal arrest. Uh, you know, if he comes back, and I don't know whether that's one of the reasons why he's not wanting to come back. Uh, but at this point, uh, it's only a civil matter, uh, not uh, quite a criminal issue yet. Though it is said Father Adrian has hired an attorney, none have entered their appearance on his behalf in the District Court of Guam. The church-imposed sanctions will remain in effect until Father Adrian returns to Guam. Well, he apparently wanted to be the victim's boyfriend when he allegedly threatened her with a gun. DJ Ludwig is charged with terrorizing possession of a firearm without a firearms ID and possession of an altered identifying marking of a firearm. Court documents state the alleged incident happened at a, dead at a home early Saturday. The responding officer found the suspect inside the home and told him to get on the ground. Police also located a semi-automatic pistol. The victim told authorities the suspect was her cousin's ex-boyfriend, who also allegedly threatened to kill her friend. He is also accused of pointing the gun at the victim. The suspect told police he found the gun at a job site in Zonia but denied the allegations made against him. A man is accused of rushing towards another man with a machete and beating him. Wisely Mathias is charged with aggravated assault with a special allegation of possession and use of a deadly weapon in the commission of a felony, resisting arrest and disorderly conduct. Documents say the victim told police the suspect attacked him for no reason. Investigators learned the suspect was calling others in the neighborhood out to fight as well. Police found him hiding behind a pile of trash nearby. The suspect failed to comply with police forcing officers to use a stun gun before taking him into custody. Custody. During the arrest, a second suspect identified as Siwin Matthias, allegedly blocked, responding officers yelling that Wisely is his brother. Other men nearby surrounded the patrol car and continued to block the road. Siwin was eventually arrested and charged with resisting arrest, disorderly conduct, and underage consumption of alcohol. And what was supposed to be a fairly routine oversight hearing of GMH on general operations and the renovations of the birthing center has taken on more significance after a pair of doctors leveled corruption and mismanagement charges against hospital administrators. The allegations have prompted Health Committee Chair Dennis Rodriguez Jr. to impanel a special bipartisan investigative panel to look into the allegations. Nestor Lacanto has more from the oversight hearing in Hagatnya. Nestor? Chris and Dick, this was a regularly scheduled oversight hearing, but what adds to the significance is a previous hearing for the repeal of the sales tax. And of course, the Guam Memorial Hospital gets a percentage of the sales tax proceeds for operations, to fund their operations. But um, there were two doctors that used the opportunity to raise allegations of corruption and gross mismanagement at the hospital. And one of the uh, main points or key points that was raised by Dr. Uh, Kozue um, Shimabukuru was the fact that um, she says that many doctors at the hospital do not submit the medical records on time and as a result she claims there is more than 22 million dollars worth of billings that could not have gone out which the hospital would lose. Um, this was disputed by other doctors including Dr. Shea who said as far as he is concerned, himself and other doctors he knows do submit their uh, medical records on a timely basis. So he says that what she has been saying is not true. 
But as a result of what she has raised, um, Ch uh, Health Committee Chairman Senator Dennis Rodriguez has put together a six-member bipartisan panel um, to look into these allegations of corruption. Um, they include Senators uh, himself, um, Senators um, Joe S. and Augustine and Michael Seneglis on the Democrat side, and for the Republicans is Senator Mary Torres, um, Senator Fernando Estevez, and uh, the last one to be impaled is Senator Will Castro. Um, we don't know at this point uh, whether, um, when those uh, uh, senators will, that investigative committee will be meeting, but um, we are standing by for uh, an announcement by Senator Rodriguez. So I'm here at the legislature covering the hearing this evening. Back to you in the studio, Chris and Nick. Thanks, Nestor. Well, 2,000 applications and counting as the deadline to file war claims is fast approaching. Congresswoman Madeline Berdalio is encouraging all eligible survivors or their family members to apply. Dozens already heading to her office in Haganya today to file their claim. Carmen Terlahi reports. It's been 73 years since World War II came to an end. The wound still fresh in the eyes of our island survivors. Nisita Sabrina Adelazama, now 90 years old, recorded her oral history while filing for war claims at the University of Guam back in December. She remembers being only 14 during the occupation of Guam. We were in Manigun uh, camp, no food, water hardly any. People are drowning, hungry, crying. And name it, we suffer a lot. It's been a long time coming. Congresswoman Madeline Bordalio says the effort to pass legislation was not met without challenges, including the struggle to allow family members to file for their loved survivors who died early on, before the bill was passed on December 23, 2016. However, there was strong objection in the Senate to including this category. But I fought hard to keep it. But ultimately, after decisions and discussions with leaders on Guam and what some of our war uh, survivors, it was agreed that in order to for these survivors who are still alive, only the living survivors and the heirs, those who died during the occupation, would be eligible. Pordalio's only regret? that more survivors won't be alive to see the day. Only hope that we could have had an earlier, uh, that is my only uh, upsetting I, you know, feeling about this whole thing, is that so many have passed on we started this. Though the application may seem daunting, Bordalio says her Washington, D.C. and local office are here to help. Open on Guam Tuesday from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. to assist Manamku make the deadline to postmark by Wednesday, June 20th. I think this is recognition for those that survived the war and, of course, closure. You know, we've been talking about this, like I said earlier, my predecessors all worked on this and... Uh, it's been, it's been, what is it, 70 years? That's a long time to be. And our people have been very patient. Bordalio expects it will take time to review the over 2,000 applications. The first decision she hopes will be made as early as August. Reporting for Guam Seas Network, I'm Carmen Victoria Turlahi. Stick around for more news here on Primetime. You're watching KUAM. There are more ways to experience KUAM News than any other source on Guam. Download the KUAM News app for your Apple or Android device for 24-7 news, sports, videos, weather, streaming with KUAM radio, and important news alerts. And stay connected at home with Guam's first app for Apple TV. All available now from the App Store. A simple handshake. That's all Jake Calvo needed when he started his company. Today, 80 years later, we like to say thank you to all of you who have taken our hand in trust. Thank you to the dreamers. Thank you to the realists. Thank you to the family-oriented. Thank you to the entrepreneurial. Thank you to those climbing the corporate ladder and to the ones starting a new life together. Thank you to the traditionalists and the edgy, to the young at heart and the old souls. Thank you to the daring, to the protective, to the practical, 
Thank you to the hopeful. To all of you from all of us, our deepest, happiest, and infinite thanks. 80 years here for you. 80 years thanks to you. Calvo's Insurance, a legacy of trust. As a nurse, I cared for thousands of patients at their time of greatest need. I know how important it is to have our only public hospital accredited. With your help, Josh and I will change our island's approach to healthcare. We will reduce insurance costs, make sure there are enough beds at GMH, better utilize public health centers, and invest in the latest technology. We will get the job done. I'm in to help get us there, and I humbly ask for your vote. I'm and I approve this message. In this divided world, there are still things that unite us. Great music, thrilling games, and the love for that perfect burger. Ruby Tuesday Guam, for the love of burgers menu. For a limited time, get an amazing burger for just $11.99. Lunchtime at Ruby Tuesday Guam. We're celebrating our 135th anniversary today, both in the outlying regions on which we hub and also here in Guam itself. It means so much to our team here in Guam. It means a lot to us in the Mats and Management team because what it says is we're here to stay. It's a real physical manifestation of our commitment to this region. It's so important that we hire locally, we develop talent locally, we train locally. What's been a wonderful addition to our approach there is that many of the people who started off in Guam have gone off into significant leadership roles elsewhere in the company. This is our headquarters here in Guam in Micronesia. And when we talk about putting down our roots, it's not just doing business, it's about everything we do with our friends, our customers, and our employees. I believe that nobody can replicate what we do, and that's why we have such a great team and such a great service and why we're successful. This is our home, this is our life, and we're happy to make a difference in everyone else's life. There are more ways to experience Guam via KUAM News. Giving you what you want, when you want, and how you want it. From smart devices. Alexa, what's in the news? Here's your flash briefing. Over the web, on mobile, on streaming platforms, with immersive, interactive formats. And via social media where it's more than just content, it's conversation. More ways to keep you informed and entertained. Whenever you want it, wherever you are, on whatever device you're using. It's a possibility one local elementary school might be named a new central middle school. The issue brought up as the Education Department crunched the numbers to find out where to cut costs. DOE and school officials conducted a walkthrough to see if this move would even be possible. Salome Vuki has more. The home of the Busy Bees may soon be home to only middle school students. During a tour of Chief Brody Elementary School on Monday, officials walked the halls to see if it's possible to convert the Tamuning campus. The transformation is a part of DOE's redistricting plan to get students attending schools closer to their village home. Putting our kids in their community schools, to me, is a, is a priority, should be one of the priorities too, is putting the kids in the area in which they're familiar with, their community schools. The campus would transform from holding 300 elementary students to 600 middle school students from Tamuning, who currently attend Jose Rios Middle School in PD. Board member James Lujan. The school is pegged for an elementary setting, but that doesn't mean that you can't use minimum standards uh, when it comes to students in the classroom. During this walkthrough, officials found multiple challenges they could face in converting the home of the bees from an elementary school to a middle school. We'll probably have to do a lot of uh, purchases of collateral equipment for middle school size uh, students. The restrooms uh, looks likely that we'll have to make, do some expansion and upgrading of the restrooms. Not to mention budget shortfalls to secure facility funding. One of the things that we're looking forward to is, to is to be able to have a dedicated stream of funding for facilities so that we can use and prioritize those, those funds for different types of projects. Fernandez adds other reconstruction like Simon Sanchez remains a top priority. The assessment will continue into the summer. The superintendent says he expects a decision by September to start the work for a new middle school at Chief Brody. That school could open as early as school year 2019 to 2020. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Salome Vuki. 
This gubernatorial hopeful won't make it to the primary election. An order out of the District Court of Guam on Monday dismisses the case filed by Sitfri Lansongan. Lansongan alleged he was denied his constitutional, organic and U.S. rights when the Guam Election Commission told him he couldn't put his bid for governor without a running mate. The GEC in their response argued that in order for the court to have jurisdiction, the litigant must have suffered an actual injury or be threatened with actual injury. Lansong and the GEC stated has made no clear intent to run for office. The court not only granted the defendant's motion to dismiss but also denied Linsongan's objections and requests for follow-up. In Decision 2018 News, Democratic gubernatorial candidates Lu Liang Guerrero and Josh Sonorio unveiled their campaign platform in a news conference at their campaign headquarters. Liang Guerrero says if elected, the focus of the first 100 days of her administration will be, quote, fixing our financial house. She says this includes a full assessment of collections at the Department of Revenue and Taxation. I presented to the administration a financial plan. Day one of our administration, we are going to collect those taxes. Day one of our administration, we are going to provide the human resources that we need to collect those taxes. Day one of our administration, we're going to form our tax recovery unit. And day one of our administration, we are going to start putting in the technology and the advances that we need in order to track those people that really are doing business but not, t not paying taxes. She says they do not support any tax increases. A copy of their platform is available on their campaign website. Senator Louise Munoz's bill allowing medicinal marijuana home cultivation has been introduced. Bill 302 would amend the KC Savage K Conception Compassionate Use Act of 2013 to allow either qualified registered patients or caregivers to grow up to nine marijuana plants at their homes. Patients or caregivers would first have to secure a permit from the Department of Public Health. It would mandate that medical pot be grown indoors or outdoors and not be visible from any public location or neighbors. If grown outdoors, the marijuana must be secured by a locked gate. The law cannot be fully implemented without a lab that would test medical weed to ensure that it's safe for consumption. Grassroots Guam, an organization that promotes the responsible use of medicinal marijuana on Guam, says the bill does nothing to ensure public health follows the law. In a statement, the group said there are no guarantees public health will start issuing permits upon passage of the home cultivation law. The group said it would, quote, lend full support to Senator Munya to ensure safe access to patients is protected. With regional headlines, here's KSPN 2 News. Half a day, Guam. Here's what's making news in the CNMI. The long-anticipated wait is now over. The road construction up to Capitol Hill is complete. And this two-year-long project completion is recognized by the community with the ribbon-cutting ceremony. Two and a half plus years, almost three. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> and now, as of today, the road leading up to Capitol Hill is complete. This is Issa Drive, a road construction project that consisted of three phases. First started out to be a six million project turned into eight million project because of the additional realignment of the road going down to Kingfisher, whereby we have to correct it because the original, the old road, the old road before is a private park, so we have to connected back to the, the original uh, government land, land. Secretary of the Department of Public Works says this completion has been a long time coming. And I thank again the public for the patient for the last two years. I know there's been a lot of calls about bumpy road, uh, mud and everything, but finally uh, it got into fruition and I'm so glad that this project is done. Also in news from Capitol Hill, Governor Ralph Torres signs into law the legislation requiring all property owners with blighted properties on Saipan to be held accountable. Property owners are to secure and maintain abandoned, vacant, and blighted buildings. Representative Lorenzo de Leon Guerrero authored this bill, which is now titled Saipan Local Law 20-25 and known as Nuisance Abatement and Blighted Property Maintenance Act of 2018. Watch these top stories and more at SaipanTV.com. For KSPN2, I'm Adriana Cotero. Sports is next, but first a look at your island weather.
in trouble every now and then. Everybody needs a friend, someone who can help you out. Life isn't easy, it's a bumpy ride. Hard to take it all in stride when you're upside down. When Make every day a plus. It's a celebration at Cars Plus and Mighty. And during our Jeep celebration event, you'll save thousands on every new Jeep in stock. Like a new 2018 Compass. Save up to $3,750. Or save up to $4,000 on a new 2018 Cherokee. How about a new Renegade? Save up to six grand. Plus, buy today and receive a Cars Plus value card where you get 21 cents off per gallon at all Shell stations. Hurry in for our Jeep celebration event. Going on now at Cars Plus and Mighty. Cars Plus, driven by you. Where will your sip take you? You're going to need more than an oil change. Okay. Okay. Try our new slushies at McDonald's. Tropic Twist, Blue Raspberry, and Cherry Limey. Perfect for summer for a limited time. KUAM Sports is presented by Triple J. What's up, Guam? Dave Delgado here for KUAM Sports. Thanks for watching. We get the show started tonight with footage from this past weekend's Kids Fishing Derby that was held at the Aspen Beach Park. Check it out. The 2018 Department of Agriculture's Kids Fishing Derby drew out 23 kids, ages 7 to 12 years old. The fishing derby was free of charge and featured three categories. Kids competed for the longest fish, longest trigger fish, and most fish caught. Trophies and prizes were given out to the top winners in each category. This was a catch and release derby hosted by the Division of Aquatics and Wildlife Resources, Sport Fish Restoration, with the assistance from the National Park Services, Fish caught were measured and documented under type of species. Kids were also taught about the catch and release program and how they were doing their part in making sure generations of fish were able to be bred and there will be fish to catch in the future. Drinks and snacks were provided along with some bait for those fishing. The event was a nice way for families to get out of the house and spend time together. All 23 kids went home with a prize. U16 boys basketball from the Youth Summer Showcase, powered by Docomo Pacific, Elite Gold, and the Rebels taken to the Guam League Court. Rebels player Carson Jackson with the ball dribbles towards the baseline and takes it up in between two defenders for the shot off glass. Caleb Menno sets up in the corner, gets the pass and works his way towards the basket. Menno gets the floater to drop, showing some touch on the release for Elite Gold. Javier Camacho tries to attack the basket, the defense collapsing down, shots short, rebound by Evan Brown, ball gets stolen, Noah Stanley at the right place at the right time, picks up the easy basket down low, Elite Gold hold it down on their home court for the 45-30 win, corner three all net off the kickout pass by Jeremiah David. Leo Palace was the spot for the fourth annual Conquer event. This year's course featured 17 obstacles, both on and off road. Hundreds of participants took on the course in teams and competitive enduro solo divisions. There was a kayak challenge, Nissan Titan truck pool, and a huge man-made wall. Competitors had to scale over. 
Once up the wall, they finished down a cargo net or zip line. There were several fun activities for the entire family. Kids 14 and under got to try a short course for free. Businesses took advantage of the opportunity and registered their teams as a way to boost morale amongst employees. Start times were spread out based upon registration and division. Kids had fun on the 100-foot inflatable water slide and giant bike challenge. Food was provided by Leo Palace, and adults enjoyed the grown-up section beer garden where they rehydrated themselves. Congratulations to Christina Ingvarsson Guerrero on her first place finish at the Ironman 70.3 Centra Chita Peninsula Japan event for females ages 40 to 44 years old. Christina crossed the line at 5 hours, 35 minutes, 16 seconds. Good enough for the top spot in her age group. She was 15th out of 116 females and 245th overall out of 1,492 competitors. The race consisted of a 1.9 mile swim, 56.1 mile bike ride, and 13.1 mile run, totaling 70.3 for the half Ironman competition. Well, that's going to do it for sports. We're back right after this. Only Pizza Hut lets you surround your favorite pizza with greatness. The one and only stuffed crust pizza tempts your taste buds with melted cheese stuffed inside that amazing crust. And at just $17.99 with one topping, the stuffed crust pizza is truly irresistible. So grab your slice of pizza perfection with cheesy goodness baked right into the crust. The stuffed crust pizza, just $17.99 with one topping. Only at Pizza Hut, the island's best. purchase a vehicle from our dealerships, we give back to the American Cancer Society and Guam Cancer Care. With your help, together, we've raised over $400,000, giving local cancer patients a gift of more anniversaries, more birthdays, more years, more days. Together, we're giving them the gift of time. Triple J, customers first. And before we close out the news tonight, our latest round of birthday shoutouts from the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club. Happy birthday, Noe Alexis and Nova Alexander Lingo Lingo Kasten. Coming from Mama, Daddy Justin, Grandma Bernie, and Grandpa Bert, Uncle Merv with the swerve, love the familia. Ezra with lots of love from Mom, Dad, Brothers Keen and Tegan. Great Grandma, Lu Lang, and the Familia. Also, happy birthday, Aaron Anthony Uggen, and happy belated birthday to Justin Timonglow. Remember, you can be part of the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club by registering online on KUAM.com. Please make sure to include with your photo your name and birthday. And that's going to do it for us here in the news desk, but stay tuned. Up next, sports director Dave Delgado features local athletes that have taken their game to the next level. It's our latest special, Level Up. Good night. Okay. Closed captioning is brought to you by IT&E.